Hey, I'm back and I'm making pine tar soap. I'm going to get my hands washed up real quick. This is our lemon lard soap. Uh, a little piece right there. Uh, this soap, I was asked by someone to show how uh, our soap lathers. Check this out. I will give you a little demonstration of that. Absolutely. I should have already done that. So you get a little, watch this. Lard soap doesn't lather, I would say, as much as the other soap, but it also uh, is super moisturizing. Uh, lard is the closest thing. So we'll be doing a lard soap uh, video later to show you how to make your own old-fashioned lard soap. But can you see how so it's just a smooth, soft lather? Uh, the olive oil... Uh, one, the olive oil and canola oil and coconut oil one. I mean, look at that. Really lathers. Really lathers well. Uh, it has castor oil in it, and this does too. See, see how wonderful the lather is? I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm not doing a demonstration. Everybody should know how to wash their hands. But today, we are making pine tar soap. Old-fashioned pine tar soap. Let me get, oh, I just got water on my phone. Let me get my towel really quickly. I will show you the, the ingredients that I have. Let me turn this around. This is what we're putting in our pine tar soap. This pine tar, you can order it from Amazon, but the local tractor supply had it. You want to look for a pine tar soap that is non-carcinogenic, which is meaning it doesn't have those cancer-causing chemicals in it. And you want to look up uh, Blackmore Pine Tar. This has been around since 1882. So it is the best. And let me show you what it looks like. It literally looks like tar. Like it's black, thick, really, really... Um, smoky smelling. Uh, oh, that reminds me, but I got to get my tea tree oil. Here, let me grab it. You see, I have tea tree, tea tree oil. Can you see that? Is it going to be backwards? Sorry if it's backwards. Uh, tea tree is also a wonderful essential oil for people that have eczema and psoriasis or skin issues. I've had a lot of requests to make an activated charcoal soap with the tea tree. So just give me, um, give me some time. I do make several activated charcoal soaps. The calendula and activated charcoal is one of my favorites. And I'm going to just describe what I have. This is olive pumice oil. Um, you can get your extra virgin olive oil. Um, you can even get that light salad olive oil. Um, olive oil is just one of my favorite ingredients. Uh, oh, thank you, Connie. This is uh, one of my favorite olive oils that I get from Web Web Restaurant. It's, two, it's one word, Webstrant. There we go. Uh, I order this, my um, coconut oil, which is in this giant bucket. Giant deal of pure coconut oil. This is the 96 degree, so it's not going to melt until it's at 96 degrees. Um, I already had started measuring up the coconut oil and stuff to kind of speed the process uh, around. So this is the uh, Soaper's Choice Sodium Lactate. This is going to help your soap set up a little faster. This is the lye we use from Essential Depot. This is the Soaper's Choice Castor Oil. And then we have a dill of vinegar, just in case we make a splash on our skin. Let me flip you back around. Oh, thanks, Mom. I know that Dad, he gets into that poison ivy and you, and y'all are super allergic. So, uh, last year, I decided to make a wreath. And, hold on, I gotta get this, gotta get this in the holder. I also have to listen for my children. I sent them outside with their oldest brother for popsicles so I could... Uh-oh, uh-oh. Did I mess it up? 
Am I, are y'all still there? Anyways, they're outside with popsicles. So I got to keep an ear out for my kids. So if I run, I'll be back. <laughs> Uh, so make sure you have your protective gear. We're going to put our apron on today. One of my favorite shirts. I don't want to get the stuff on. I keep face masks. Um, I always have them. So you can use these just to have precaution. But because we soap with ice or frozen goat's milk, you're not getting those fumes like you would if you were just using water and lye. Okay? And then make sure you have yourself some gloves, goggles or glasses, and just be careful. We are working with lye. So, uh, oh, sorry. I guess, I guess I didn't turn down my notifications like I thought I did. Let me do that real fast. So we're not getting buzzed every few seconds with notifications. Okay, let me get my apron. For those that watched my live this morning, the brisket is smelling fantastic and I already turned it down to about 275 because I just want to make sure it's cooking at low and slow temperature. So for those that you, oh and also I didn't put, you want your brisket to be about 200, 203 is the ideal temperature. I don't, I read that somewhere and it's that's you turn your oven off pull it out if it's reached that once it reached the 200 degree temperature I'm gonna internal I'm gonna turn it off so and that's the thickest part of the brisket you want it reaching that 200 degree temperature so sorry I'm just gonna get all suited up here and get ready to soak so I already have my olive oil and coconut oil measured out now your pine tar is, I'm going to go around, I can't see back there. Your pine tar soap, uh, or your pine tar, you want to put in with your coconut oil. Because the coconut oil, I'm going to warm that up just for a minute um, in the microwave. So we have one pound, let me look at, one pound, five ounces of your coconut oil. And then once it's warmed up, I'm going to zero it out and I'm going to put four ounces of this pine tar. We're going to use quite a bit of pine tar because you need um, a lot of it to really work. So hold on. Let me throw this in the microwave. Now, since we already got our olive oil measured, I take my ingredients and I move them over to the side or I put them back up so I'm not forgetting that I already put that in there. So in your olive oil mixture, you want to put in your castor oil. And in this recipe, zeroed out, it's two ounces of castor oil. Castor oil is great for the skin, too much, and it makes a slimy soap. I don't know how else to explain it. And just enough will make it suds up and it'll be wonderful. You have that one smells good. Oh, the lemon. The lemon does smell good. Um, I don't know if you got, I have lemon eucalyptus and that one is lemon verbena. Am I saying that right? I'm hoping I am. I love it. It smells so good. Okay. Woo. Almost went over. It's very easy to go over. Two ounces is, uh, you don't, you think it's it's not very it's not very much once you pour this because it's a very thick, dense liquid. So we're gonna put this to the side. Now we're gonna measure our goat's milk. I showed a trick on my last uh, live video that um, you want to add some distilled ice. So I already have my distilled water frozen into ice cubes, just like my goat's milk. Let me get my goat's milk out. There's several bags of goat's milk. So I just freeze my goat's milk in ice cube trays. And in this recipe, just double check, yep, 20 ounces of goat's milk. 
So I put about 15 ounces and then five ounces of the distilled water. That way it stays nice and cool. Um, you can also put this in an ice bath, which would be you put it in your sink or you could put it another bowl underneath with ice because you want to keep the temperature below 90 degrees when you're working with goat's milk. Goat's milk can scorch and then you're going to scorch those the beautiful goat's milk. You don't want to do that. That's perfect. So now I'm going to get my distilled water. And yes, I don't, I don't throw these away. We recycle. So I'm using these cleaned out bags to put our abundant amount of goat's milk in. We have quite a bit of goat's milk now that we have a new goat. Okay, so now I need five ounces of the distilled water. Nope. There we go. Perfect. That's 20 ounces all together now. So I'm going to put this back. Okay, now on your sodium lactate, um, I put in a teaspoon per pound for my soaps. So I have my little measuring cups. Um, so in a four pound batch, I'm going to be using uh, 20 milliliters. And that's it. So I'm going to move this to the side. And then I'm going to put this bowl in the sink because when I pour the lye into my frozen goat's milk, I like to do it in my stainless steel sink. That's another tip. If you haven't ever watched uh, any of my soap making videos and you're brand new to making soap, please go over to YouTube, 3H Farms TX. I and so many people have how to safely work with lye and soap, but you can't use aluminum, you have to use stainless steel. So make sure you're using a stainless steel bowl and make sure you're using things that you're not gonna reuse, like plastic and glass absorb lye. And so just have a safety precaution, you just want to make anything, any spoons and spatulas that you're using, these are now my soap spoons. These are, these are what I'm going to be soaping with from now on. So now that I got the sodium lactate in my goat's milk, I'm moving it off to the side. Now, I have my vinegar here and ready. The coconut oil is now done. I'm going to get that first. The lye is the last thing you open and you touch. Now, if you don't have a microwave, just put this on the stove on low and let it melt but you don't want the temperature to get too high. It's 101. By the time I add this can canola and olive oil mixture in with this, it's going to cool it down. So zero this out. We're going to get our pine tar in there. We're going to get four ounces of our pine tar. Can you see? Look how thick that is. It's like molasses. There's one, two, Oh, almost three. I'm trying to pour it slow. Three, so I don't go over. Three and a half. Three point six. Oh. Try not to go over. There we go. Four ounces. Hi, baby. My husband just came home. I'm going to say hi. I'm going to bust in. Mm. Hi. Give my beautiful wife a kiss. Hey, guys. How's it going? Making soap. Making pine tar soap. Your favorite. Mm, I love the pine tar soap. Smells so smoky. So good. You know, the one thing that I really liked about the pine tar soap was it helped with that poison ivy. Yep. I was telling everybody about that. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a game changer for me. So, okay, well, enjoy your soaping and your live. You guys have a wonderful day. I have lots of work to do. It's, and kids uh, to watch because they're It's outside. Sunday, <laughs> but it's not an off day. Okay. It's just another day. Another day. That's right. 
When you have a soap business and a handyman business, there's and no, farm. and a farm, and three, three kids. kids, there's just no stopping. It's non-stop around here. Uh, I got the brisket in the oven, babe. I can smell it. It's wonderful. It smells good. Okay, so now we got our pine tar in with our coconut oil, and we're going to go ahead. I can, I'm done weighing that out. I'm going to move my scales back over, and I'm going to put the olive oil, canola oil, mixture in with those. You can stay inside, baby. I'm doing a live, so y'all be quiet, okay? Got kids, it's real life. So y'all just can't come in the kitchen while I'm making soap. I got I got it, Thanks, baby. Real life, I tell you. If I was to never do a live because of real life situations, I would just never get on here. Uh, one of my lives last week, uh, my four-year-old was trying to move like a little tray that we were setting in the living room the night before, and he ended up smashing his little finger. I just ran in there, kept the live going, <laughs> and just made sure he was okay because they come first. And so if there's ever an interruption, you know, my kids come first. So I'll definitely love being on here showing you guys how to make soap. But, uh, you know, they come first. So right now I'm scraping uh, all of this into my container. Giving it a nice stir. And I, I want to show you how dark this soap looks now. Or oils, not soap. It's, I'm going to end up spilling it. Did you see that? I just, a teeny tiny bit. Look. Dang it. Trying to show you. Well, you know what? I could I could be smart and put it in the clear picture so you can see it. So let's do that. Sometimes I don't know, you know, what I'm thinking. So now we're gonna scrape this one. <laughs> This will be better so you can see it. And then I'll show you how dark. It looks like coffee. It's so dark. But the creaminess and the whiteness of our goat's milk, it's going to lighten it up a little bit. Has anyone ever used pine tar soap? It cl not including my mom because she has. My mom has used all the soap that we make. She's got the, the special uh, family soap. Whatever I make, I get her to, to try out. Because her and I, we have sensitive skin. Well, my kids do too. So I always test out the soap. And if it's good with me, it's, it's going to be good. But there are some people that are more sensitive than I am. And that's no joke. So uh, that's why we started our soap business and our soap company. To help those that suffer with skin issues. Because most of our soap, I have honey and oat soap. And I have soaps for super sensitive skin that have no essential oils, no fragrances or anything. Then I have soaps that have essential oils like our lavender and oat. Um, and then I just started using fragrance oils. Um, this year, no, I started a little last year, uh, during Christmas, so we can have some different smelling soaps, but it took me a long time to find, uh, Rustic Essentials is where I love my, to get most of my fragrance oils from. Bulk Apothecary, Brambleberry is pretty good, you just really gotta make sure you get the body safe. I'm gonna not put the tea tree oil in. Um, until I get the lye mixture in here because if I add tea tree oil before I get the lye uh, sponify started uh, emulsifying, I'm sorry, with the oils, it's going to speed up the process. The pine tar is already going to speed up the process of the soap making, so I'm not going to use the blender for very long. Okay. Uh, I've got the goat's milk in the sink. Now to measure out the lye. This is where I have to put on gloves, people. Gloves and the face mask is also recommended uh, because it's a very fine bead. And um, in the past, I've worked with the flakes. They have a, a like a, a little flake um, kind of lye. 
and I like the beads better even though they're more static they're staticky I don't know if that's a word um, the flakes have more dust so uh, <laughs> get it over my hat okay let's start hat let's do it this way there we go Ta -da! okay my hat straighten my hat up okay 9.6 is what we're using with the lie let me double check i'm pretty sure 9.6 i got my recipe over there instead of having it right here so i only have a little bit left in this can you see i point this down a little bit so you can see what i'm doing okay so be really careful not to spill this anywhere So I take my cap and just kind of knock off any of the access, uh, excess. Okay. Done with that one. And if you're new to my channel or new to our uh, business page, we're making soap, pine tar soap. So we're going to 9.6. Perfect, right? Oh, nope. So, perfect that this did happen. It went over just a hair. You have to have your measurements exact. So, what? let me get a spoon. Not touching anything. This is how you put the lye back in. You get 9.6. This is how much I went over. That's not very much. So you just put it back in your container. Then you, there we go. The lid back on that baby. And now this lye, if it was uh, super moisture outside, it would uh, it would start absorbing the moisture. Here, boop. Let's see. Um, Let's see if I can set you up over here so you can see what's going on. I'd like for you to watch. You see, without my phone dropping in there. I'm trying. I need I need a better. I need add that up a half. Up a little bit. Still got my face mask, gloves, eye eye protective. And we're just going to be careful with this. This is how we sprinkle it in. Sprinkle a little on top. Knock any of that little stuff off. Set that down on the other side. And we're going to stir it. I'll try to show you like this. You want to be very careful not to do it too quickly or slack. Can you see it already melting? Look at that. It's already melting that, like that fast. Let me sit it back down. Oh. Please do not let me drop my phone in the lye. Goat's milk and lye mixture. So we sprinkle a little more. And then just stir really carefully. I want to be really careful. And if you splash some on you, get the vinegar and rinse it off with vinegar. It's the best thing for you. Now, honestly, I don't even need my face mask because I have windows open. It's a beautiful day. But just to be precautious for you new soap makers, this is what you're going to need to do when you very first start out. But honestly, I, you can't even... There's no fumes. And let me get my thermometer so you can see. Instant read thermometer. Amazon, I don't even know. If I was pouring 38.6, if I was pouring this into water, 
This would already be 120, 140 degrees and rising up to 200. The lye heats up. That's why it's melting the ice so quickly. So if you are using water, the other tip, and it's in my videos, never pour water into your lye. You would always pour your lye into your water. If you do it the other way around, it's going to volcano up and it's going to be bad. I've never seen it, never done it, but I've read all these books and precautions and that's one of the number one things you always read is never, never, never pour water into lies, uh, into your lie. You sprinkle your lie into your water. And then if you're doing it that way, the fumes will be very strong and you need a very well ventilated area. Doing it with the ice and keeping the temperatures down is great. Look, it's already melting. Like, it's melting it super fast, so I gotta work a little quicker, okay? Is that good? Okay, bear with me, guys. We still got a little bit left in there. Just sprinkle in a little bit at a time so we're not scorching our milk. You don't want to scorch your milk. And we're, we're mixing this in our sink right in front of a window. Uh, I can't even smell anything right now. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Almost done. This is our last little bit. You see it? Now on this side, look at the static. See it stuck to my spoon? When that happens, you just kind of got to scrape it off into the bowl. That's why we do the mixing in the kitchen sink. So if any of those little drops were to drop onto my countertop, it doesn't matter what kind of countertop you have, maybe stainless steel, it wouldn't do anything to it, but maybe, um, you know, just, it would, it probably wouldn't eat stainless steel. So if you have a stainless steel countertop, that would be awesome. But for mica or granite, anything porous that's made of rock, it would eat a whole glass. Ate a hole in glass. I'm still trying to scrape that off of my spoon. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of water into that bowl. Over there in the other sink. Not into the goat's milk and ice. And I'm just doing my best to scrape the sides. And I've not gotten any on my gloves, but it's just better if I'm wearing gloves. Okay, let me take this off because I'm hot. It makes me hot. And we still have a few ice cubes in here. Let's check the temperature. You want to keep it below 90. 88.7, okay? So if this keeps rising, we would put this in an ice water bath. We'd put ice in this sink right away and we would keep it down. But I'm, I've done this so many times, this is gonna keep from going up any, I mean, if it goes a little bit over 90, we're okay. But we don't want to scorch the milk. And you, one telltale sign of your milk getting scorched is when your milk is yellow or orange. This is a beautiful, can you see that real well? white creamy white color it still looks like milk so you still know it is perfect i just want to make sure everything's mixed in really well scrape the sides really well stir it good okay now i'm going to get my oils check that out looks like coffee okay so now we're going to put this here and i'm going to pour my lye mixture, now that it's all nice and mixed up. I'm gonna scrape the sides really well. We're gonna pour it into the oils. 
Nice and easy not to splash. Now, I will show you something here in just one second. Let me get that. Can you see this? See how there's like little chunks in there? So make sure they're not like hard. You kind of break them up. That way, sometimes they'll make a clump of the lye and it'll harden and it can mess up your like little blender. Sorry, no, it's hard to see. I just gotta scrape all of this out. So scrape with your spatula all around. Just like if you're making a cake, you wanna get every little bit of that out. Okay, now I'm gonna just put this bowl in the sink, not add water yet, and I'm gonna put my spoon over there. Now we're gonna bring this over here and do some blending. And I'm gonna bring you over here too. Let me grab like my hands, bring you over here. Let's see if we could just set you down here. You don't have to see me as long as you're seeing the blender, right? Oh, come on. Ta-da! You see that? There's the lye and goat's milk mixture along with the oils. Now, I'm going to take my spoon and just give it a nice stir. Just so I could get it mixed up a little more. Okay, and now I'm gonna get my blender, my little attachment, little hand blender. Let's scoot you back. Let's see if we can get you further back here. There we go, now you can see. Now I can see you. I'm gonna, we're just gonna blend this for a minute. We just want to bring the both mixtures and emulsify them together. See that? See how the goat's milk lightens it up a little bit? It's already super thick, so we need to work quickly because it is going to set up really fast. You just want to see the oils and the lye mixture come together. You could definitely hand stir this uh, with a spatula. It would just take you a lot longer. A whisk would be better if you had a, a whisk, but you know, you could definitely hand stir it with a spatula. You would just have to really work the muscles for a while. This makes my life so much easier to have this uh, hand blender. Okay, it is getting already super thick. It's starting to get um, so thick, I'm getting worried that it's not gonna get be pourable. So, I'm gonna take, this is a, a one ounce container of tea tree. I have half of this left. That's all you need. When you're using tea tree, wintergreen, certain essential oils, you do not want to overuse those oils. It is not good to overuse. There is an essential oil calculator. I highly, highly recommend when you're making your soaps, go to, look it up, Google search essential oil calculator and it'll tell you the amount of essential oils to put per pound of soap. Because not all essential oils are the same. Look how, ugh, I gotta show you how thick this is. So, I'm actually gonna just let that set. If I, if I emulsify that anymore, let me get you back in this holder. Bear with me, people. If I lose you, I hope not. Okay, I wanna see, I want you to see this when I'm pouring. Let me get this out of the way. Move, move everything. 
All right, guys. Let me get my spatula clean or my uh, beater cleaned off with my spatula. My blender, my beater. It's not a beater, it's a blender. It's already setting up so quick. We got to really work hard, work fast. Let me show you what it looks like. So it's already getting to the uh, to the tray stage. Uh, this is it's starting to look like uh, caramel or pudding. That we need to work fast. So we're going to be pouring now. That tea tree oil really speeds up the process. Okay. Oh, I think it's beautiful. I just, I know it's just brown soap, but I just really love the smoky um, tea tree oil and smoky smell of the pine tar. It is such an amazing smell to me. I don't know if it's because I live in the country and we sit around a bonfire from time to time roasting marshmallows and s'mores, but it definitely has that smoky, earthy, smoky smell. I just love it with that tea tree oil. You could put any essential oil in here, but I added tea tree because of the properties of tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is amazing for psoriasis and skin issues. Um, you can put any essential oil that you feel that you would want this soap to smell like. So feel free to customize it and do what you want. Use that essential oil calculator because that is my go-to when I haven't worked with an essential oil before and how much to use. Certain things like tea tree and wintergreen, you cannot use too much of that stuff. So, see how thick it's already getting? Can you see that? I'm trying to show you the best I can. Let me move it over. A little more. There we go. Sorry about that. Hello, Miss Amy. If you're just tuning in, I'm making pine tar soap. And it's thickening up, so I got a super hurry. This soap here is so thick already. So like literally had to work super fast. Give it a little bump. Get any kind of air bubbles out that it may have. This soap is a little dark right now, but it will lighten up a just a scotch, a little tad bit. <laughs> And then, if you are like me and like textures and stuff like that, you could just put a nice little, even it out, put a nice little spatulas. Well, this one wasn't even. Bring some more down here. And then I'll do the little spatula mark on it. Okay, now I'll do it. You could get a spoon and make even deeper indentions. Like you could just, you know, I like, sometimes I'll do this. You could do it with a spoon or a spatula. Make little textures. Uh, I mean, you could do just pretty much anything you want. Like, but you have to hurry and you got to make it fast. So, just to, just because this is a pretty top selling soap and I don't want to go too fancy on it. I'm just going to put a nice little swirl like or a swivel like whatever you want to call it. I need lunch apparently because my brain's not working. And then you, I just find it fun to just play with the soap. And that's it. Done, son. 
We're gonna put uh, cellophane wrap on this, uh, but can't touch anything right now. Let me tilt you back up so I can see. Oh, yeah, I need a new holder for sure. Trying not to get soap on my phone. Uh, so anyways, this is pine tar soap. This has got the tea tree oil in it, so it smells amazing. Um, but this soap is fabulous for rashes, eczema, psoriasis. Um, I even, let me move this. This is driving me crazy. I even uh, found out over the Christmas time that I'm highly allergic to cedar. I thought I was just allergic like during the time when the pollen's hitting. Um, no, I was making a beautiful live wreath, a cedar wreath out of trimmings. And my arms, by 30 minutes of working with the cedar, were on fire. And I'm not joking. They were red, you know, and they started to swell and it started to hurt. I hurried up, grabbed the pine tar soap rubbed it all over my arms and I didn't rinse it off for about 20 or 30 minutes and then I popped in the shower washed and I'm telling you the burn and the itch went away so if you find yourself allergic to poison ivy um if you have psoriasis if you have any of that I highly recommend you making pine tar soap at home I'll show you again what that pine tar looks like this is the kind of use, sorry it's backwards, but it's uh, Bickmore Pine Tar, uh, Pine Tar quality product since 1882. It is non-carcinogenic. Please, please make sure you're buying the kind that is non-carcinogenic. I did my research. This is the one that I use. They put this stuff on horse hooves. Um, they do all kinds of things. It says directions. Wash and dry hoof. Apply below uh, the coronet band of hoof and hoof wall. As a hoof pack, apply to the bottom of the hoof prior to shoeing. So this is some amazing stuff. And they've been using it for a long time. They use it in the war to dress wounds um, in World War One and Two. We We've read a lot about pine tar. It's really interesting stuff. So if you guys want to come wash the dishes... You know, after making the soap, you're welcome to. Just stay six feet away from me. <laughs> Sorry. It's not a time for jokes, apparently. I'm, I'm terrible. Um, I, I shouldn't be making jokes. I, I apologize. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to get this stuff all cleaned up. And I am going to check on my brisket. Uh, brisket smells amazing right now. If you don't know, I've been cooking a brisket since about 10. It's amazing. Uh, hey, Miss Dina, what's up? You gotta rewatch this. I made pine tar soap. I know you got some poison ivy on your property. So, this soap, uh, Lucia, it, it's about three to four weeks for the soap to cure. Even though I use the sodium lactate, uh, to help speed the process, so sometimes the soap can cure in about 14, um, 14 days or so. It just depends on the humidity outside. I always post when our soaps are available on our on on this page. Uh, so be watch up for watchful for that. I'm trying to get better at updating our our uh, website and working on that. So just bear with me. Uh, I'm not a web developer or anything. I've learned all this from YouTube. So I'm doing the best I can there. But um, I will post, I post most everything on this page because it's just easy peasy. And I got a lot of our buyers and followers on here. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. I'll be taking this video and sharing it on to YouTube, repurposing our content that way. Um, if you guys got any questions about um, any soaps that we have, feel free to message us on here. Uh, we also have a Gmail at 3hfarmstx at gmail.com. Uh, feel free if I don't respond um, on Facebook. Sometimes I, I check my emails every morning um, after I'm done milking goats and stuff like that. So I try to um, check everybody's messages and stuff. As, mo as much as I can. So, that's it. I'm done making soap. 
and I'm going to get cleaned up. If you guys got any questions, uh, send me a message. Sometimes on these lives, people have posted questions and then I miss the questions. So, um, you know, sorry about that. If I miss a question, tag me in in the question or send me a message. Um, I'm, I'm one person. That's why I tell my family. Um, I got three kids trying to get me. I'm just one person. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm going to get done. I got a garden. I got to get out there and start getting some gardening done and hopefully um, get more work done. And I forgot. I was going to tell you something. Ah, anyways. Oh, I'm going to make lard soap. That's what I was going to do. So next week... Uh, be looking for a live not sure on the day it's my son's birthday next week and since we can't go anywhere we're gonna try to do fun stuff at home and I've got still the soap business and everything going on so I'm gonna try to make a live video up here on Facebook how to make lard soap old-fashioned lard soap it's one of my favorites I use lard um, and coconut oil still use the castor oil and it is an amazing soap. Thank you, Lucia. You have a blessed day too, hun. Thanks for watching, everyone. And you guys stay safe.